Hi everyone, I'm Ellie Ward. Today I'd like to uh, talk about my experience uh, of being attacked by dead bird ransomware. Uh, actually, uh, the attack server was at my father's company. I'm not the staff of the company uh, now, but um, uh, I was taking care of the uh, internet security of the co company uh, a little bit, so mm, I, I'm into the situation right now. So I'd like to talk about uh, based on the blog entry I made, I just made this morning. So, okay, uh, uh, let's read along. Okay, uh, uh, it was a dead bird out of the blue. Okay, uh, slightly after my father went back home from work on May 13th, his QNAP NAS server at his company was attacked by dead bird ransomware. Later, I knew that there were multiple attacks on uh, different servers on May. 13th, so it was mm, an, an, uh, multiple attacks. Yes, so, uh, he noticed the extensions of the files on the server were turned into dead board next morning because it was Saturday morning. His security management company was not operating, so he gave me a call. He asked me to come up to check it up and fix it, but actually, um, as you know fixing ransomware is not so easy so then i thought his vendor should be should take care of the incident because i was not in charge of the security management of the server any longer so I asked him to wait for their support next week the person in charge of my father's server from the vendor visited his company and explained how they could recover the files he told us the server had been set up so that backup files would be made when they were stored at the same time and they would be able to restore the files from the backup my father made them take their server to their place then it took them quite a few days to estimate how much it would be necessary to pay them to recover the files after the long wait they told us it would cost around 400,000 yen to recover the files because my father had already paid more than 4 million yen for the security systems, including the server, viable equipment and setup, he didn't want to pay any more money to them. So my father decided to ask me to try to recover the files instead. So my investigation started then. After checking the server, I found out the vendor only made backup folders, but did not particularly set particular setting did not uh, but did did no particular setting to actually make any backups at all after at first i searched for information on the internet mainly in english to find out whether there are any ways to recover the files without paying the ransom some websites suggest we use file recovery software so my trial to recover file without a description key a decryption key started I wondered why it could be feasible when the extensions of all the files had been turned into dead board. Some people on the forums mentioned the fact that the criminals didn't change the file na names directly, but made new files with the extension of dead board and deleted the remaining original files afterward. So that's why some people believe they can recover the files in, the, in this method. I found a very helpful tool on the following website. It uses Ubuntu and PhotoRec on Windows. It recovers the deleted files through uh, those the file names are lost and tries to match the size and extensions of the files to recover the file names. This is a link for uh, data recovery after ransomware data board. I tried this tool spending quite a lot of time, but the result didn't come as expected. And though many files whose file names were lost were recovered, many of them were broken and didn't open, and the matching process brought back only a limited number of files in the right place of the folder structure. 
I suppose it happens because the encryption process also changed, changed the file size. The criminals seem to have known this kind of recovery method and taken measures somehow. They deleted the file so that they would not be able to recover it, and then and they even changed the file size. This is the image of the recovered uh, files whose file names were lost. Actually, the, uh, the file names are uh, the names of the uh, driver drives uh, sector names instead. After trying various kinds of de decryption tools, I realized there were no description tools I could use unless I had the description key, partly because that board was relatively a new kind of ransomware. I hope uh, some genius will create a tool to enable us to decrypt files in the future if we have a pair of files, an original file and its encrypted file. After giving up recovering files without the decryption key, I asked my father to introduce ESAS Date Recovery. I could recover the deleted files with their file names remained. In some cases, the criminal seemed to have even deleted dead world files, so I tried to recover those deleted files as well. I also tried to find the traces of the criminals, such as all kinds of log files and others. As far as I could see, all the prominent ones were completely destroyed so that the file size would turn out 0 kilobyte. So, uh, the next section is report to the police. My father reported this incident to the police and told, he, told them his daughter was trying to recover the files. Then they asked him to explain the situation for them at his office. So he asked me to come over for that. The problem was the ransom note, which was supposed to be displayed when I accessed the server through the browser, was not displayed. I was under pressure for the demand to get the ransom note displayed by all means by the time the policeman visited. So I, I started to uh, try to recover the ransom note. The method which was provided by the web page of QNAP support to recover the ransom note did not work. It seemed the ransom note is automatically deleted if we reboot the server because of their malware remover. I even contacted the help desk of QNAP and asked for their help, but their response was slow. So in order to recover the ransom note, I had to execute the program file, which the criminal left on the server myself. So <coughs> this is the location and the name of the file. Uh, the file name is sddpd.bin. I could execute this file after uh, logging in my server through SH using command prompt. Okay, let's have a look at my blog uh, for the uh, command. Then it returned some error like this. Uh, this uh, this command, uh, which is spelled C H A T T R. I'm not sure how to read it. Maybe a chatter. Uh, this command was not found. It seems QNAP NAS doesn't have several commands installed, like YUM and. Uh, Mm. Yeah, they don't have one. So I copied the file chatter from Ubuntu to the server using the tool called uh, WinSGP, which enables me to operate the files on the server in the form of an explorer through the H through SH port. Then the error changed. The error changed to permission denied. So I changed the permission setting of the file chatter using WinSGP. I turned it, uh, the permission into 777. Then another error has returned. Chatter symbol lookup error. Undefined symbol, if set project. I tried installing various kinds of packages to solve the error, but suddenly I noticed the ransom node had been displayed on the browser. They say it is also displayed when the connection with the server is terminated automatically. So it seems the uh, FSET project error didn't have to be solved. So I'm not sure when the ransom node became available actually. Well, uh, 
uh, these these are the things I did to uh, to get the uh, ransom note uh, displayed. Okay, these are the uh, ransom notes. Yes, uh, the uh, the page consists of three e pages. So if we click on the links of the uh, on the ransom note, I can we can uh, see these dialogues. Okay, uh, the criminals uh, not only uh, yeah um, ask their victims to uh, pay the ransom which is worth their points, their three Bitcoin, but also they uh, ask the vendor, actually QNAP, to pay for the uh, uh, ransom uh, for um, their uh, knowledge uh, of the security holes, vulnerabilities um, about, um, and, uh, you know, it, it costs them um, uh, like five Bitcoin and 50 Bitcoin. And this is explanation explanation on how to get the decryption key. Yes. Uh, to bypass the ransom note page and access the setting page of the server, we can still use this link. Yes, uh, you can use the cji-bn link instead. The criminal left the program files for the victim to be used for this decryption to uh, there are two files with file names consisting of four to five numbers. Actually, is the one with smaller file size is a program tool to be used for decryption. Uh, once the decryption key is gained after paying the ransom, even if the button on the ransom note does not work because the effect of the QNAP malware remover, we can execute this file manually to decrypt the files. Okay. Uh, I explained the situation to the police. And to police may visit my father's company at last. I explained how I had been trying to recover the files in detail and showed them the ransom note and the content of the program files the criminal left on the server. They told me my explanation was easier to understand than any other people. Also, they told me the fact that they had never met any victims who had paid the ransom. That is why they believed in the hearsay that only 30% of the files can be recovered even if they paid the ransom. I told them the percentage was groundless and most of the files would be recovered if we get the decryption key. On English forums, I found quite a few reports that they paid ransom and got back their files. The reason why Japanese people believe in this kind of hearsay is that there is a moralistic belief, belief among Japanese people that paying ransom means to encourage criminals to proceed with another crime. When I visited the websites of Japanese file recovery companies, they say we, mu we should never pay ransom first of all. I thought it was very strange because most of Western file recovery companies offer file recovery plans on the assumptions that the victims should pay ransom. In terms of a devastating ransomware type, like Deadbolt, we have no choice but to pay the ransom if we want to, to recover data. So I, want, so I wonder how Japanese file recovery companies could recover data as for Deadbolt. The police also told me that we should avoid paying the ransom if possible, but if retrieving back data is a matter of life and death for the victims, they also understand paying ransom would be unavoidable. So my father decided to pay the ransom because he believed in the result of my investigation. So it's the paying ransom phase. I use my account with Binance, which I usually use for cryptocurrency trading. After paying the ransom, the decryption key was published so that everyone can see in the internet internet like this. This is this is a screen. The decryption key is the characters which are displayed in the field of crypto pub key ASM after OP return, OP push bytes is 16. Around here. Around here. By searching for the Bitcoin address of the wallet of the screen now, we can see how many people paid ransom like this. Uh, we can see uh, the uh, you know, traces of people who paid the uh, ransom on this page. Decrypting with third party tool. Because I could not trust the decryption 
tool the criminal had left, I used the decryp decryption tool provided by EMSI soft. Yeah, this is the link for the tool. Although most of the files were recovered, the function of the tool was not perfect. I suppose the criminals also anticipated uh, there would be such a tool. They sometimes left the encrypted file with the original file name and the encrypted file with the extension, extension of a dead board attached. So something like an avatar files without extensions were sometimes made during the decryption process. Also, there were some files which were encrypted but left without their extensions changed. The tool of EMSI soft sometimes failed to decrypt such files too. So I used the dec dec decryption program provided by Criminal Eventually. So after recovering all the files, including deadbolt ones and others, in exter external drives, I eventually decided to try using the tools the criminal left. As I had expected, the button on the ransom note did not work and it said the decryption, dec uh, decryption was complete without recovering the files in the shared drive at all. But executing the program file manually actually worked. This is a command prompt screen hmm. of my uh, so execution of the file. The support page uh, of QNAP provides the details on how to do this. It is understandable, understandable that the program file which is a criminal used to encrypt the files was the most suitable for decrypting the files. Although there might be some files which are lost, all the files seem to have been recovered more appropriately than any other methods I had used before. So I recommend you use this method, method to decrypt your files anyway. Though I don't mean to praise the de technique of the criminals at all. They are just clever enough to make such a program file. Okay, uh, so the important issue is the recovery rate. I should say we can get back 95% of your data. It's a kind of psychological <laughs> judgment. <laughs> because uh, there, might be s there might be some files which are lost during the encryption and the decryption process. I don't know what the server looked like before the attack. So I can't say it is 100%, but I believe paying the ransom was not a waste at least. So I'm now copying the recovered files on the server to the external drive. My father asked me to initialize the server, cooperating with the vendor. He would like to continue to use the server as his internal server only. Okay, uh, this is a lesson learned. Uh, this case made me realize I should not rely on the vendor of the internet security system so much. I wish I had made a sure to have the backup copies of the files on the server at least, though I'm not sure I, I'm not the staff of my father's company now. I hope I can make sure we have backup copies of the files periodically from now. Okay, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for uh, watching my video. Please subscribe and uh, I hope I can uh, keep up with the uh, good work. So, mm. so uh, thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Bye.